Hey, I'd like to welcome everyone to the summer camp planning workshop. Um, and the whole purpose of this workshop is to talk about the steps um, to think about when you're planning for summer camp. So there's a lot of different things uh, for those of you that are new to uh, having your kids attend summer camp. There's a lot of different things to think about um, before you even look at registering. Uh, one of the things is what about your needs? Um, what are your needs? Are you working full time uh, that you need a certain specific number of weeks? Um, are there certain camp hours that you need? Um, do you need something close to your house? Uh, is the cost of the camp a consideration? Also looking at uh, what are your goals for your child? Is this, uh, you want just pure fun? Do you want some learning? Do you want to focus on social inter interaction, skill building? Um, also looking at what camps are a good fit for your child. So if your child has a lot of sensory needs, um, probably a really large camp with crazy amounts of noise and lights is not a good fit. Um, if your child likes art, signing up for a sports camp is not a good fit. So it's kind of looking at what kind of camps, what the interest of your child is, what their needs are, what what where they do better. So looking at those kind of camps. One of the big things is to look at what kind of support needs your child has. So do they need one to one? Uh, do they need a structured or specialized environment? Uh, do they need? Um, are they pretty good just with redirection? Uh, the other thing we're going to talk about is the information. Uh, what information should you give a camp uh, to, to support your child? Touch on what funding is available. Uh, so those are kind of the things we're going to talk about. Okay. So the first thing is about uh, selecting the camp that will be best. So one of the big things you're going to look at is do you want a day camp or an overnight? Obviously, a four, five, six-year-old overnight camps are a bit overwhelming, uh, but a 10, 11, 12-year-old child may really like an overnight camp. I talked a bit about the type of the camp. Um, we talk about inclusive camps, so kids where your camps where your child is integrated into um, the camp uh, along with everyone else, or there's a there are a few camps that are specialized, so they're designed for children with disabilities and often they allow the um, siblings or brothers and sisters to attend. Some camps offer inclusion support um, and then you'll also want to look at what kind of support that they can provide. So some camps um, will do personal care, some camps won't do personal care, um, um, some, some camps will do medication and uh, those kind of things. Uh, if you're new coming in to the workshop, if you can just make sure your mic and your camera's off, that would be great. You also want to look at if your child needs a lot of support, ask the camp if you can provide your own one-to-one -one worker. Do they allow that? Um, and then also looking at uh, what kind of uh, qualifications they have to have. Look at the camp environment. Is it large group or small group? Is it an indoor and outdoor? If your child's a flight risk, uh, an outdoor camp may not be a good situation. If your child likes structure, um, a camp that's really easy, go with the flow is not the best option. So looking at that camp environment, Again, I talked about this, what camp, motivate, camp activities are motivating for your child and what is the accessible, so accessibility of the camp. So if your child is in a wheelchair or uses a walker, looking at the, that physical environment. So the first uh, section that I wanna cover is your support options. So um, if your child requires one-to-one, -one, um, so if at school they have an EA, so either assigned directly with them or it's uh, one that uh, EA that will do like two kids in the classroom and your child's one of them, you'll want to look at a camp that has that extra support. 
Um, so there are camps in Cambridge that offer that inclusion support, the one to one or two to one. Um, you'll want to you can also look at sending your own support person. You can look at a camp that has a, what we call a lower camper to staff ratio. And so again, those are your smaller camps. Um, and so if your child, and I apologize here, <coughs> if your child does not need one-to-one, -one, um, so you can definitely look at a lower camper to staff ratio. Um, also uh, looking at arranging accommodations to set your child up for success. So sometimes you can do shorter days. So you can talk to the camp um, and say, hey, is it okay if I come in at 10 um, and stay till four or my child gets really tired in the afternoon? Uh, is it okay if I pick them up at three? Um, sometimes they will allow a facilitated breaks or personalized reminders. So your child may not need one-to-one, uh, -one, but some of these kind of things. Um, will help. Okay, so talking a little bit about camps with inclusion programs. These camps fill up, real, these spots fill up really fast. Um, often a camp that has the one-to-one -one inclusion staff, there is no additional fee for that one-to-one -one staff. Um, but as I said, the spots do fill up fast. So when you register for your camp, at the same time, you're going to apply for that one-to-one um, staffing. And again, find out what support that inclusion staff is able to provide. What we really strongly recommend if possible is that your child meets the inclusion staff prior to camp. If it's not possible, you get at least the inclusion staff's name and their photo um, so you can help prepare your child for going to camp. Um, and then, as I said, you want to prepare them, let them know that who they'll be spending the week with, where they'll be going. Uh, and the other thing that you want to do is provide the camp with enough information to set your child up for success. So the big question I get is, well, what camps in Cambridge have that inclusion support? So the city offers one-to-one, uh, two-to-one, for all of the city run camps. So that's the camps at the Cambridge Center for the Arts and the camps that the city directly runs. It does not provide one to one for the neighborhood associations or any other of the private camps. I did include Camp Brebuff. Um, it's not that far from Cambridge um, and it's in Rockwood and they also offer one-to-one -one spots for their day camp. And that's kind of more like in a traditional outdoor day camp. And then if your child's older, um, there are some overnight camps that also have one-to-one. -one. If you're willing to drive, there are camps with one-to-one -one in Guelph and there are in Kitchener-Waterloo. Um, in a later slide, I will show you where to find that information. Or, for example, if you work in another community um, but live in Cambridge, you may want to look at uh, a camp in another spot. Um, as far as one-to-one -one support in AIR, there are not any that I know of that have the for, uh, formal inclusion support, but I will touch on some uh, that may have uh, some other support that we can look at. So one of the other things, if your child really needs a one-on-one -on -one, um, and there isn't a camp, definitely connect with a camp that you're thinking about to see if you can submit, send your own worker. And as well, do they have specific requirements for that worker? So do they have to be a certain age? Um, do they have to be have certain um, education requirements? If you're sending your own person, start your search early. Um, and some of the suggestions that 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 uh, were places you can look is um, connecting with your special services at home coordinator if you have one, if they know staff. Um, sometimes we've had EAs, the educational assistants from the school that are willing to do a week or two in summer. If you have a babysitter um, that you use, they may be willing to do uh, a week or two with your child in camp. Uh, and again, if you are providing, uh, supplying your own one-to-one, -one, provide as much information as possible to your support worker about your child, the camp, 
the type of support you expect them to provide. Um, talking a little bit about special camps with lower camper to staff ratios. So these are camps that do not provide one-to-one, -one, but are set up with more staff. Um, so it may be a um, three to one or a five to one or a four to one. So four kids to one staff. Um, so, and again, these are typically camps that are designed specifically for children with disabilities. So the city runs two. It's called Sunblast and Imagination Station. Um, that registration for those camps open February 1st. The Beachwood Brainery, they have a camp in Cambridge and a camp in Kitchener. Um, the Camp Pride is by Costco, that they have a teen camp that has a lower ratio. Uh, Community Living Cambridge has a teen uh, camp with a lower ratio. I included the Sunbeam uh, camp because if your child has a lot of medical, um, they have the medically fragile camp. So um, they do deal with uh, um, a lot of the different medical supplies. So it is a good uh, camp. And again, another adult or teen, late teen one is Adults in Motion in Cambridge, as well as there's a bunch of overnight options. So these are camps, as I said, that are designed specifically for children with disabilities. Um, and often, uh, I know Sunblast is a reverse integration, meaning your siblings can go as well, and I believe the brainery as well. The other one that we talk about is camps with an inclusive philosophy. So these are camps that often have an inclusion facilitator assigned to the camp. They just don't do one-to-one. -one. So they'll help with that transition support or they'll help um, if uh, helping the counselors on how to make sure your child's included. Um, and so these are the camps where, um, Again, if your child needs this one-to-one, -one, these are not good camps for your child. But if your child is doing okay at school, just needs a little extra support, needs some things set up, um, the camps with an inclusive philosophy are a good option for you. So um, the Y in Cambridge, the YWCA has a whole bunch of different camp options at Shades Mill. Uh, registration opens February 1st, and all of their information is posted on the website. The Cambridge Y, so this is a change from last year. They are no longer doing one-to-one, um, -one, but they are doing, um, they have some inclusion staff to help uh, with, help their regular staff just make sure things are inclusive, transitions are built in, um, some of those things that will set your child up for success. Camp Pride is the same, and that's the uh, younger ages. Um, the Sunrise Riding, um, so these are both horseback riding, Camp Ride, and the Sunrise Therapeutic Riding. In Cambridge, there are a whole lot of neighborhood associations. And again, a bunch of them do have inclusion facilitators, um, but again, they're working with like a larger group and they don't assign one-to-one. -one, so they do have some of that support. Um, when you're asking about air, I would look at some of the child care. So a lot of the child cares run camps. Um, and with running the camps um, in, in the child cares, um, just ask them. The challenge with the child cares is that they often deal with the kids that are registered with them or the kids that have before and after school care. So they tend to get um, priority. The other things is to look at if your child in a karate program or in a gymnastics program and an organization knows your child, ask if they got, if they're offering any summer camps and if they think they can accommodate your child. So they know your child. Um, and these are camps that will often uh, do some inclusion. The next thing that we really talk about is sharing information. And what we want is, what we encourage you guys to do is to share as much information as possible uh, with the camp providers. The reason we say that is you want to set your child up for success. Um, and we know that every child is unique. Um, and so one of the ways that we at Kids Ability really encourage it, the city does require it for their camps, 
is creating what we call an all about me form. And this is just a sample uh, where you'll have like a background. If you have child happens to have sensory things, they communicate differently, what motivates them, uh, things they need help with and strategies. So here is an example of one that is filled out. What I will do for those that are participating in the workshop, you will get a follow up email um, from me that has this all about me information included. For those of you that are watching this um, after the workshop, this is posted on the Kids Ability website as well. Um, the critical piece here is the strategies that help your child participate in the program. A lot of the camp staff are high school or university students. Um, and yes, you fill out the forms, um, but this is kind of like a one page uh, jog their memory um, snapshot picture. OK, so the other question that I get a lot at from camp from families is where do I find information about the camps? So on Kidsability website, we do have um, a camp directory. And in that camp directory, it doesn't list every single camp in um, Cambridge or Kitchener or Waterloo or Guelph. What it does is it lists camps that are either have one-to-one, -one, um, are specialized, or that have that inclusion philosophy. And so we call it our inclusive camp directory. Um, it's organized by day camps and overnight camps and your teen camps. Um, and then you will see the site, uh, a location of it. We have the camp planning information on our Kids Ability website, and that's where a copy of this workshop will be, the all about me, those kind of things. So when we're looking, those are just kind of general spots to look. The City of Cambridge on their website um, and their camp specific camps will be posted probably by end of the week in a spreadsheet and then the week before, um, so near the end of January, um, the exact camps will be listed in their coral. Same with uh, Cambridge Center for the Arts. Um, they have their own website, but it will also be listed in coral. The YMCA information is already posted. Their camps uh, registration starts January 17th. <clears throat> the YWCA information is already posted, um, and this is a link to all the Cambridge neighborhoods. So uh, there are a bunch of those um, in Cambridge. I believe there's six of them or seven, um, and they this is uh, one link that you can get all of those. The other thing to do is definitely talk to other parents, what camps have been good, um, what do they recommend, all of those kind of things. We are also having... Uh, next week, we will be having a camp workshop where the camps are coming and presenting. Um, so the camps for ages 4 to 12 will be on Monday night um, for 7 to 9. Registration is on the Kids Ability website. If you can't find the registration, email me with uh, respond to the link that I sent out tonight um, and I can direct you to the right spot. And then we have one for teens and young adults coming up in February. The other piece that parents are often asking me is what funding options. And so we break our funding down into two different options. One is disability specific and the other is based on income. So as far as disability specific funding, if your child has autism, you can apply to the autism direct funding. This is offered through the Sunbeam Developmental Resource Center. You can get up to $500 um, and the deadline to apply is January 31st. This funding is, the prior to, priority is given to those families that do not have special services at home. Um, and so that if that's the Autism Direct funding. The other one, if your child has autism, um, Autism Ontario has what's called the Summer Camp Reimbursement Funds. Um, and again, they have up to $600. The process, uh, the selection for this is done by lottery, which means um, your name is drawn out of a hat if you, you happen to get that. If your child has cerebral palsy, there is extra funding through the LEAF, the Life Enrichment Activity Fund. Muscular Dystrophy has some funding. If your child has Down syndrome, 
The uh, Down Syndrome Society has a camp and bursary application. You do have to be a member one year prior to being able to apply for this um, bursary. And you have to give them 10 hours of uh, volunteer work in the year. They cover um, the cost for a one-to-one -one worker or the extra cost for a specialized camp. You can use your special services at home dollars to pay for your camps if you have that, as well as your autism childhood budget um, if you have that. There are a number of camps uh, funding options that are income-based. Um, so sometimes camps directly have their own uh, subsidy program. The city of Cambridge has up to three hundred dollars um, a year, and it's done as a uh, it's not done as a calendar year. It's done as you apply. It can only be used for city of Cambridge programs, and it is only for residents of Cambridge. Jumpstart, um, their application process opens January 16th. They have up to $300 per activity, and when I say twice a year, so you can apply for camps um, and up to $300 for that, and then in the fall, you could apply for a different kind of program. Um, the Y has a fee assist as well, and then within the family outreach program, um, there is funding for camps as well. So those are kind of your funding options. Um, the other piece that I want to do in the formal before I, I jump into some of the uh, answering some of your questions are you've done all your work, you've applied for your funding if you need that, you've registered for camp, you've done your all your forms, you've done your all about me, don't forget to prepare your child to go to camp. And so we're talking about talking to them about going to camp, um, maybe looking on some websites, or uh, if you can talk to the camp about sending you some photos or videos, like what is it gonna be like at camp? Um, if you can visit the camp ahead of time, preparing, um, requesting a weekly schedule in advance from your camp counselors or, or your camp. Um, most camps will have all of that really well prepared so you know what order is in what so then you can help prepare your child. Um, some parents write social stories about their child going to camp. Some camps have social stories already. Um, and the other thing is to stay positive and optimistic um, as new adventures. And then I want to close close the formal part of the presentation with the conclusion that a child will survive, survive, sorry, a child will thrive in the environment that's best suited for them. So picking a camp that's really looking at their interests. Um, the more they're interested and they connect, the fewer challenges we find that they have at camp. And again, I'm not gonna stress, I can't stress this one enough, Give the camps as much information as possible about your child. The right camp will welcome your child. Um, and the more information the camp has, the better prepared they can be. And the, the better we'll set your child up for success. The last piece I wanted to share is that we do have some additional support. So we do this workshop. You will get, a, a, as I said, a follow-up email from me with the slides um, and the link to the video. But you can also book a consult where you're thinking like, oh, I, I have a lot of questions. I'm a new user. Um, I need help to apply for some of the funding. And uh, you can book a consult. Uh, and again, that's just an email to myself. We do have a list um, at KidsAbility that if you wanna be part of um, and that we send regular updates. So reminders, you know, that the deadline to apply for that autism direct funding is January 31st or reminders, um, these are the registration dates. So we do have uh, regular information that we do send out um, to help you plan. Um, and at this point in time, I'm actually going to stop the recording and welcome you to, um, oops, sorry, wrong button here. And I will now 